Jill Jones with SPNN and we're here at the Noble Family Farm. This is definitely a family affair and we're here to find out what family farming is really all about. This is Linda, Mike, and Dylan Noble. Linda, why don't you tell us what family farming really means for you? Well, for me, my grandparents, my great-grandparents were farmers and Mike's family was too. And so for us, it's, it, it's just what I grew up doing. It's what I wanted to do and I love it. It may not always be the easiest thing to do in life, but it, to me, it is what my family is, is we're farmers. And, and we're sustainable farmers and we're organic farmers and grass-fed farmers. And we love working with the animals and our family gets to work together. And Mike, is it the same for you? You grew up on well, a farm? Well, I've, I've seen an awful lot of, to deal with the you know word survival. I've seen so many people fail farming and there's this responsibility that I've inherited to, to continue my father's farm and to continue on in the things that he attempted to do for his family. So deep down inside of me there is this responsibility to be successful along with the pressure of the world around me to to be successful and then the modern agriculture this continuous bombardment of what we should do to be a, a successful farm so there's a struggle that goes on in my head every day when I go to work. Was it a hard decision for you to stay in farming when things were difficult or was it always something <clears throat> that you knew you had to do? Well there was a time during the farm crisis when our debt was three times what the value of our farm was and we couldn't borrow money from the bank and we didn't know what to do and so her and I were, were ready to just give up and, and I went to um, a tour on a farm, uh, on the French farm where they were grazing and okay. 10 years before I'd visited his farm as the most modern dairy with all the doodads and the equipment to, to get high production and here he was turning these beautiful Holstein cows out onto a field and just letting them eat grass and so it was a big shock to me and we went home and and um, we couldn't borrow the money to plant our crop or to buy fuel or anything and so we put a fence around the farm and we started in doing it. Then we la learned later that we had a nutritionally different product and that there were people out there that wanted us for a lot of other reasons. We did it out of desperation. And how does it make you feel that your son Dylan wants to continue on with the family farm? Well, I'm a little bit jealous. He goes at it so much more casually. He, he doesn't seem to have any stress. It seems like he's missed the the whole suffrage part of it you know he's grown up dealing with the consumer and so he's connected he's producing something he knows somebody really wants where when I grew up I produced something that the buyer would tell me was wrong you know okay. we had to fight every day for a price you know and um, he's growing up in an environment where his his buyer is somebody that's very happy with what he's doing so would you say, Dylan, that the St. Paul Farmers Market has had a big impact on, on really how you've grown up in this farm family and how you want to continue on? Well, yeah. I get a kick uh, of talking to everybody up there. I just love meeting new people and everybody's getting more, they're getting smarter about what they need to ask to know what they want due to the fact that we have more media telling them what the modern system is and what they need to do to ask what they want. And in general, do you think that if your family was a production type farm operation, do you think you would have the same draw coming uh, into the family business or do you think maybe you would be looking elsewhere? I think things would be a lot different, especially on the farm. You go in a lot of these bigger places and the smell is so strong and out here it's just peaceful. It's just gentle and nice and I love, I love it here. And at your age, a lot of kids are going away from home and, and getting away from their parents, but you seem to really enjoy being around your parents and your parents enjoy being around you and you're working together every day. How is that? Well, that's great. I love Ma's cooking. That's all good. That's, and then, you know, I always am learning from Dad. He's just a wealth of knowledge. I mean, if they could just make a book on half the stuff he knows, it'd be a bestseller, but... So you're going to school uh, to be educated more along the lines of business education, website development, but what you're really getting in an education in agriculture is really from your parents. Yes, and my parents and then people around me. I love to talk to the old guys at the VFW because, you know, they've been through a lot too and they've, they've seen it all. And so I think that is the best form of education is talking to people who have lived it, people who have been thick and thin through it all, and then they're still around. So. And at this point, you're probably even teaching your parents a little bit as well as what you're learning? Yep, I'm trying to teach them more about more modern forms of advertising like 
like advertising on the internet. Right now I'm rebuilding our website and I'm doing all the new modern web stuff I've learned in school and I'm trying to get dad to get on the computer more and do his records on the computer nice. versus good old paper and pencil. But nice. and, and Linda, you have a, another generation yet of grandchildren that you're also bringing to the farm and bringing to the St. Paul Farmers Market. How is that for you being able to, to bring the next generation into your into your business? Well, it's just wonderful bringing the grandkids out to the farm. They love it. They love coming out to the farm. They beg to come to the farm. I know that I can bring them out here into this field and they'll be safe. You know, I can't bring them out into a feedlot. Right. And that, so it's fun to see them pick up on the things we do and learning all those different things. And, right. and I brought them up to the market here a couple of weeks ago and they were just like, wow, this is a big place. They understand now where I go on Saturdays, why grandma's not around and stuff. But it's fun to have them part of our lives and glad that they're close enough that they can be part of our farm and, and lives. So. So the St. Paul Farmers Market has really taken your family operation out here 100 miles south of the Twin Cities and really brought you into the community of St. Paul, is that right? Yes, yes. Um, I feel like when I started the Farmers Market, because I was never a big city girl, <laughs> I was a country girl, and so for me it was a little scary going up there, but once I got up there to the cities and in that market and, and building the relationships with the other vendors and then our customers, it just felt like a small little community, and they watched our son grow up. and, and were part of his life and wanted to know how he was doing and so to me it's just been a wonderful experience with the people at the farmers market and the people that come down to support our family farm and to support our farm the, for what we do. Terrific and so we're all doing great things out here at the Noble Family Farm and we thank you so much for having us out and thank you again for participating in the St. Paul Farmers Market. You're really bringing a valuable product to all of us up there in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm.